Uh, hi there. We are going to uh, take just a moment here today to go through the really simple process to make a, an accurate anterior guide table um, on a Danar Mark uh, 320 articulator. Uh, we have one accessory on this articulator, and that is the um, Danar anterior determiner and sizal pin. As you can see, it's much narrower than the bullnose pin, and it actually curves on the back side almost like the curvature on the lingual of a maxillary incisor pin. This is done so that as we track along our teeth making the guide table, which again is just capturing really the contours of the linguals of the upper and anterior teeth as they ride on the incisal edge of the lowers. That is what anterior guidance is from generally from cuspid to cuspid. So a guide tail is nothing more than a representation or a panograph of how those teeth riding along each other actually move the pin up here on the guide table. And this anterior determiner pin, which by the way is something you really should have to make these, allows us to make them much more easily and much more accurately. The things we want to verify before we start is that we are indeed have our conjugate guidance set at what we at our preferred setting, which is 25 degrees. And then once we have it set there, we want to look at our at our function and make sure that we are indeed seeing cuspid guidance and that we have no balancing interferences. In other words, when I go this way and I move this mandible to the right, I want to make sure that on this side over here, I'm not having any balancing interferences in the posterior that are affecting my guidance. So I visually look to make sure that everything is lifting off back here when I go into that movement, and I look over here that everything is lifting off when I go into left lateral movement, that I have no balancing side interferences over here. And if I do have some, I will generally see that it causes my teeth on this side to lift off prematurely and not guide on, on the cuspids and maybe the group function on the bicuspids. And, you know, if I see these separating like this, then I know I've got a heavy balancing interference. And to correct that, I need to increase conjugate guidance until it's gone. That's why I like adjustable conjugate guidance on an articulator. So once we've verified that we indeed have no balancing interferences at 25 degrees, we're good there. We want to lock our, we want to unlock our condyles. So if we're in a lock position, lift them up. And we want to make sure that our pin is slightly up so that we don't go all the way through the acrylic to the table when we do it. And probably just about a millimeter is fine. Now one last um, accessory that is super nice to have when we're doing this are what we call the flex track inserts for the articulator. What these do is allow us to convert the open condyle Danar, which can fall off the articulator, lift up off the condyle when we're making our guide table, making it inaccurate. It converts it to a closed condyle, which keeps our conjugate ball in position and can't allow lifting of this upper member up off those condyles. Keeps our tracking very accurate. It also allows us to disengage these rubber bands, which provide quite a bit of resistance when we're trying to go through our function, allows us to disengage those and it still won't fall apart, so it makes our movements much more fluid and much easier to do. That's a really nice feature to be able to convert uh, your articulator to this kind of a configuration, at least for this purpose, but I leave them on there all the time. I prefer a closed condyle configuration. So once we've released our lock, we've set our condyles, we've lifted our pin, we've checked for balancing interferences, we're ready to proceed. <clears throat> so the first step is lubricate everything. So what I want to do is make sure that I put plenty of Vaseline on all these surfaces that are going to be grinding across each other. That would be the linguals of the uppers, cuspid to cuspid, and the incisal edges of the lowers, cuspid to cuspid. So I'm putting a lot of Vaseline on here because what I don't want to do is when I'm going through the function and working these teeth against each other, I want to avoid abrading away the stone um, and not and doing damage to my models and therefore changing my guidance. So I want to, I want to Vaseline that. We also do not want any uh, acrylic to stick to our pin, so I'm going to put some Vaseline on the pin down here, kind of wipe that clean. And one thing I hate is Vaseline on my finger, is, is acrylic on my fingers, so I'm just going to use this brush and put a little bit of Vaseline on my fingers so that, you know, the acrylic doesn't stick to me either. What I don't want to put Vaseline on is this guide table because I do want the acrylic to stick there. So now it's just a matter 
of mixing up our acrylic. And there's a variety of different ones that uh, they use. This is uh, just faucet tray acrylic. Pretty much any brand will do. So I'm just going to mix this up with the monomer to a pretty loose consistency. I don't want to make this too thick at this point. I want it nice and kind of runny. This is almost perfect. I got really lucky here. So we can let me get all the powder mixed in. So I want it loose and runny initially. And what I want to do while I have it in this configuration, this is far too runny to work with. I'm going to put just a little bit on my table here, spread it out. And this is so it bonds really well to this plastic. I want to make sure that this does not come loose. I'm going to work on the case in the lab. So while it's loose and running, I'm going to put a little bit on there. And now, patience is a virtue. Okay? We're going to wait. And we can see it starting to thicken up, but like this, it is so sticky and runny, we could not work with this. What we got to do is let this start to get into its initial set before we try to work with it. As soon as I feel like I can get it out of here and get it on the table, I'll go ahead and take it out of the cup and get it on my table. But I'm still going to pause a little bit before I actually start to try to make my guide table. So what I want to do here is just work with this. When I feel that I, can, that I can actually touch this and it's not sticking to me, I am ready to go. So I'm going to pull forward and I'm going to just do some preliminary movements to kind of see that I have enough acrylic to make this guide table. And you can see how this is wanting to move and pull the whole thing. I'm still a little bit premature on doing this. Now one thing that will happen is you'll catch the anterior portion of this. So every now and then open and close like this to get your anterior portion out of the way so we can indeed go left, right, back and forth. So initially this kind of looks like an arrowhead. It's got left, right, straight back. And when I do this, I want to, uh, when I go straight back and protrusive, I want to put my thumb up here and stop when I've got my anteriors end to end. I can feel this with my thumb. I'm going to come back to centric I'm going to open and close, and now I'm going to go into a lateral movement, and I'm going to put my thumb on my cuspids, and I'm going to go laterally until my cuspids come end to end. I'm going to slide back to centric. Now I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to put my thumb over on this side. I'm going to go this way and the other lateral, and I'm going to look and verify that I'm indeed coming with my cuspids in an end-to-end -end position. Back to centric, open close to keep this from getting in the way. Go in protrusive, straight back. Okay, and you can see now I can start to go in little circles all around in what we call the media trusive. Again, I'm going to come to centric, open, close, go this way, all these little circles. And I'm going to recognize my, my, my movements at the, at the edge, end to end here, verify that that's end to end. Come back to centric and look in here in any little areas that need to be refined. I'm just going to let these teeth ride and go in little tiny circles all the way around and get this and back to centric, back to straight lateral, back to centric, open, close, straight back and protrusive, back to the front. Again, I got my thumb here on the front so I can feel when I come end to end. So I stop this in an end to end position, come back to centric, back to lateral, little tiny circles in between. And this is why I love this closed condyle kit that it doesn't allow my, my upper member to lift off those condyles. It keeps them in position. And I just kind of keep working this, open, close, back and forth, and it should be almost a diamond shape. And I want to make sure that everything is smooth. I've got no ripples, no channels. It's really nice. Double check again that indeed I'm end to end when I go lateral this way. I'm end to end cuspid when I go lateral this way. I'm end to end anteriors when I push straight back. I can feel it right there with my thumb. And the reason for this is we can program these positions into this so when I'm making my porcelain and I push this straight back, my anterior should be facially end to end, just like this. When I go laterally, I should see my cuspids end to end, just like this. 
and so I look to make sure that's where I am and kind of keep smoothing this out and we are done with this case. We have a really nice smooth interior guide table that is now a pantograph or is that represent representation of exactly how the lower incisors right along the lingual of the upper teeth. Now when we remove these teeth, the upper member will still move in exactly the same way it did with the teeth there. And that's how you make a guide table. Now the acrylic is set, the, the heat is gone, it's cooled off, it's nice and hard. We want to just do the final trimming on our guide table to, to eliminate the parts of it that we just don't need and make it really usable. And when we look at this, when we go into, into protrusive movement, this little shelf right here where this vertical wall meets this, this uh, bottom part is, all, is, is the extent we want to go back to there on this guide table. This wall, all this up here is unnecessary. So we want to eliminate what we don't need so it just doesn't get in its own way when we're trying to utilize this guide table. The other problem we have is that this anterior portion here, this wall, prevents us from seeing when this pin in verifying that we're all the way down to the top of the table when we're adjusting our occlusion. And so we want to we want to clear out this area so we can visually see when the tip of the pin is touching the bottom of the table and even put some articulating tape in there to actually mark a spot to verify that we have indeed adjusted our occlusion all the way down when we're actually doing our crowns. So we want to take this guide table from one that looks like this to one that looks like this where we've cleared off the top, we do this on the model grinder and then we've cleared out this front portion, we do this with just an acrylic bar. That's a very quick step. So now we're going to go over and take care of those two things and we'll have this thing completed. Okay, so I like to use the model grinder for this only because it's quick and easy. If you prefer uh, to use your acrylic board for this, that's fine. I'm just going to come in here and take down this little bit of wall just like that, that quick and easy, done. Okay, we can still see that we have that point down there where this vertical shelf meets the uh, part where our stop is for our, our pin when we go into straight protrusion. Now I just want to clear out this front part. Okay, and so, you know, you may find it more convenient to uh, go ahead and do all this with the hand piece, that's fine. But now we're just going to take our acrylic burr and take this down right in the front so that I can see right where that pin was hitting. And again, I can see where this was tracking right there. I don't want to take away any part of this that I need. So I'm going to take this right on down. Okay, we're getting real close to that spot where the tip of that pin is is is. Touching the guide table, right there. Right here is where I'm really interested that I can see, verify that pin comes down right to that spot. And there we go. So here we are back on the articulator and just want to show that indeed I can see where the tip of that pin goes in there. When I track left and right I can, I can actually verify my guidance. When I go back in protrusion I stop. I still have enough of this vertical wall left to stop my pin right there. So I have everything I need in this pantograph to give me a very accurate function. I can open and close and center with not hitting anything. And um, that's it. We're done. Goodbye. <laughs> Just that easy.